Stephanie. I'm going to mute, I'm turn a, off my camera. You started, Steph. You're All right, I'm, I'm kicking us off. Well, I am so happy to be in front of the Alignable audience. My name is Stephanie Alfonso. Uh, I am the Senior Director of Vertical Innovation here with Constant Contact, uh, which is just kind of a snazzy way of saying that I have the privilege to be able to focus my energies on the real estate industry. Uh, that is where my background lies. Uh, for the past 10 years, I have been um, in uh, tech and education in the real estate space. I would travel the country to MLSs, associations, brokerages, training agents uh, and brokers uh, and alike and, and affiliates, uh, mortgage lenders, title, um, on all areas of online marketing, social media marketing. And I get to take my expertise and bring it here to Constant Contact, which is a, uh, a tried and true legacy platform known for email marketing, but so much more uh, and be able to uh, take that product and, and really uh, tailor that usage for the real estate industry. Uh, it truly, I say this over and over, it's an honor simply because it is a need in the real estate space. 86% of a real estate agent's business is going to come from their sphere of influence, their database. And it is more crucial than ever before to be able to uh, take our communication to that next level. And we're happy to do it here at Constant Contact. I'm from Tampa, Florida. I have four daughters and a little white Bichon, and I do have a husband. I've been here for 28 years, originally from Massachusetts, and that's me. And take it away, Matt, next to you. Next well, to thank you, Stephanie. Matthew Montoya, Senior Manager, Indirect Customer Ops and Success. That crazy title just means that I teach Constant Contact, and I make sure that our customers are successful. So I've been with Constant Contact 14 years. My sole job has been to teach uh, Constant Contact and teach best practices in digital marketing. Um, one thing I want to make a note of is uh, I am in awe of my co-presenter today. Uh, she teaches me daily about the real estate vertical. So this is a real estate uh, a specific uh, a bit of content today. That said, if you've stumbled in, you're a looky-loo, maybe you are in a different industry, stick around because what I'm going to share with you, what we're going to share with you, yes, some of it's very real estate specific, but the tools I'm going to show you really applicable to any business. So um, if you're not in real estate, uh, don't worry. Um, there's going to be a lot of valuable takeaways for you today too. Yeah, absolutely. And I love to think about, you know, uh, keeping uh, at the top of our mind that, you know, real estate, we are a small business, right? Uh, we are a small business. We, are, we need to operate uh, very much like a small business, that everything and anything that we're doing is truly, like you said, Matt, applicable to, to any industry. We're just going to give real estate specific examples, right? But top of mind is going to be crucial. So agenda for today, we're going to do, uh, we're going to really dive into AI for content creation. We know everywhere we go, every conference we're going to, every meeting your broker is having, we're talking about AI tools, but how can we really leverage it? How can we utilize it on a day-to-day -day basis and actually make a difference in our business? So we're gonna focus on that today, utilizing artificial intelligence to help solve that blank page syndrome of what do I write, what do I do for email, for social media, for SMS, your text message marketing, and how can we maximize the impact and engagement? I came from a space where all that mattered at one point was that you're on social media, right? And then we started getting into all these tools that generated just kind of canned content. And that's just not cutting it anymore. How can we actually be, brand ourselves as authentic, provide hyper-local information to actually get engagement on our content? Uh, because we really struggle with the time, the interest, or the expertise to do all of that, and AI can help. So branding, top of my marketing, being that first person people think of when they're ready to buy or sell, artificial intelligence to ensure deliverability, right? Not the most exciting thing to talk about when we talk about deliverability, but it's important that our content is actually being seen and received, and AI for campaign creation, Real estate professionals, I know we're excellent salespeople and everyone loves us, but we've got to be marketers as well. How can we do that? So when we think about AI, again, it's being used everywhere you look. In real estate specifically, we have AI tools being used for property valuations, predictive analytics, right? Who within my database is actually likely to buy or sell right now? Virtual tours, chat bots, tools for risk assessment, fraud detection, data insights, um, you name it. Every tool you are using, and I know we're using a lot, 
AI is going to be weaved throughout it. I want you guys to leave here today feeling like, okay, this is actually going to make a difference and save me time and make me money for content creation, branding, and personalization because the most important thing for you to do in your business right now is build that brand in that top of my marketing. Yes, we agree. Awesome. All right. So what are some challenges that you're facing in this world of everything is all about authentic uh, authenticity and brand building? What are some of the areas that are holding you back from actually creating content on a regular basis? If I challenged you all here today and said, listen, you've got to be in your audience's, uh, in your database's inbox, and you've got to be on social media at a minimum of one to three times per week, what would hold you back to committing to that? Well, I can tell you first and foremost, time, right? We don't have the time. Are you kidding me? Um, you know, I, I would love to hear from you guys. If you want to throw it in the chat, I'm sure, you know, we can get some feedback. But the other thing that I would like to say is I know your industry. I've been there. I talked to you guys. I've been belly, belly to belly with you for 10 years. Two big C's, content and consistency. I don't know what to write. I don't know what to post. And my goodness, I'm not very consistent with it, right? And I'm here to tell you, one email, same time, every week, once a week for the rest of your life <laughs> is going to absolutely change your business. The value in content creation is the goal is to, you're of course going to attract potential clients. How could you get in front ooh, of the most people possible, branding yourself as the expert in your, expert in your feet, building that credibility, that expertise in your niche market. Are you the condo queen? Are you do specialize in 55 and up communities? Um, are you do uh, work with first time home buyers? What is it that makes you unique? You know, what is it that's going to make me want to connect with you? That brand awareness, right? Your niche market, your niche community. Um, what is it that is going to be uh, set you apart from everybody else around you? That client engagement. Again, no more canned content that is just going to be generic. We really are in a day and age where everything needs to be tailored. Um, and then ultimately the goal of everything we're doing is to drive conversions, right? Build that brand, that top of mind, drive those conversions. And your biggest three vehicles to do so are going to be through your social media, right? Where you're going to have the most exposure possible. Your email, that's your database where that is the channel that you control and text messaging. Why? Because everybody lives with one of these bad boys on their phone. How can we leverage all of these together to take your marketing to the next level? Because the reality is, guys, the struggle is that whether we like it or not, right, we are feeling pressure to run a media company, right? We've got all these influencers out there. How do I compete or a marketing agency? I'm a great salesperson. Everyone knows me, right? That's the truth. We all feel the pressure. Well, with Constant Contact, we're going to help relieve that stress and show you how AI can help you work smarter, not harder. But this is where I'm going to pass it off to Matt because he is the email guru around here. Why email in the first place, right? If we don't even understand that, what's the point of talking about AI? So let's talk about the value of, of truly maximizing that, that sphere of influence, right? That's sitting right there in your database. So I'm going to start off with a story, Stephanie, a story you've heard, but most of our audience hasn't. When I first started at Constant Contact uh, nearly 14 years or 15 years ago now, yikes, um, friends, family, they, they came to me in a quiet tones. They said, uh, make sure you have your resume ready, like update it. I know I just got this job. Make sure you have your resume. Why? Why? Why should I have my resume updated? Because email marketing, it's going out of business. Mm -hmm. Facebook's going to eat it. Like it's, it's, it's gone. It's dead. Guess who's still here? Oh yeah. Guess what? Who's still here? And I want you after today's presentation, look at your inbox. Who are you getting emails from? Sure. Family, friends, but you're also getting emails from Target, from United Airlines. The big guys are in this. Why? Because email marketing is still very, very relevant. There's a couple of different reasons for that, but let's dig into a, a little bit more of why email marketing for real estate. Um, probably preaching to the choir, but email is still the king of top of mind marketing, buying that mind share, keeping that mind share in place. Um, ah, preaching to the choir here. You all know you probably have a very, very long buying cycle, right? So from the initial point where somebody is showing interest to the time they make a commitment can be very long. 
right? Same thing with clients. The time that they do some business with you to when they do business again with you is likely very long. Now, are there variances there? Sure. But for the most of you, it's a very long buying cycle. And it's Matt, critical. Wanted to, I wanted to interject real quick, uh, just for our audience here today, um, just to kind of uh, back up what you're saying. The average life cycle of the time somebody thinks about buying a home to the time they actually do is two years. Two years from the time they think about it to the time they do it. So what we're what, what our goal is in real estate is when that life-changing event happens on that, what we call the buyer continuum, right? They get married, they have a kid, they get a new job, they have a transfer, something happens. We, we don't know when that is, but when you are consistently building that top of mind over that buyer continuum, you're going to be the first person they think of. Right. So just wanted to interject that with some fun facts because I'm a nerd and I got tons of them. That's that's a great fact. And that does back up what I was saying, because, you know, unfortunately, if you are in the real estate industry or nearly any other industry, most organizations have long buying cycles. I mean, I would suggest that the next longest or the closest to real estate is going to be cars. Right. If you're in the automotive business, long, big, long uh, buying cycle. The industry to be in, in terms of short buying cycle, is restaurants. We are constantly thinking about eating and going out, right? So that's a daily occurrence, but we're not in the restaurant industry. We're in the real estate industry. We need to stay top of mind. Just because you've had an interaction with somebody, let's say you're doing an expo, if you don't take action on that contact, the person gives you their business card, the person gives you their contact information, if you don't take action on that, you're taking money and throwing it in the garbage because... As soon as somebody else contacts them, as soon as they engage with somebody else, they are now uh, more likely to do business, especially if they're staying top of mind. It helps you build credibility, right? So having professional looking, kind of glossy looking email marketing is going to establish you as credible. And I want to refer back to what Stephanie said earlier about building your brand. Do you work in condos? Are you the condo queen? Build that brand. Do you work in a particular part of town? Build that brand. It allows you to build that credibility. 61% of consumers enjoy receiving promotional emails weekly. Some of you are going, what? No. Yes. People love, here's the thing. Going back uh, uh, when I first started at Constant Contact 14 years ago, um, used to be able to throw everything in the kitchen sink in an email, right? Just email blast everybody. Um, uh, but now audiences are getting very, very uh, uh, educated in terms of targeting. They are expecting targeted marketing. 61% of consumers enjoy receiving relevant emails. Relevancy is the critical part of success. We need to make sure that we're sending as relevant content as possible. If you want to make money using email marketing, be thinking through, is this content really for everybody or is it just a subsect? So is everybody going to be interested in this part of town? Is every gonna be, everybody going to be interested in this size property? Is everybody going to be interested in this price point? The answer is no. Maybe you're asking too much of one email. Maybe you need two or three emails to go out that are targeted. For every dollar sent, you can expect a $36 return on your investment. For every dollar you spend, I'll go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. Email marketing very inexpensive. And given what you do, you're going to see the return on that investment really quickly. Email is almost 40 times more effective than Facebook and Twitter. I said it. Twitter. More effective than Facebook and Twitter X uh, combined in helping businesses acquire new customers. Constant Contact loves social media. We're a part of today's sessions about social media, right? Love social media. It's an essential part of your marketing, mm -hmm. right? The reason why social media can be ineffective in some cases is that you don't own the relationships. They own the relationships. They decide who's going to see your content or not. And in fact, algorithms, actually computers decide whether people will see your content or not based on how much they engage with you. The more that they comment, like, share your content, retweet, et cetera, et cetera, the more they're going to see stuff come from you. The less they engage, the less they're going to see from you. But ultimately, they own the relationship. They can change the rules at any time. Email marketing, you own the relationship. You own the contacts. You determine when and why people will see content coming from you. It helps you stay top of mind, helps you build that brand. Consumers are most likely to be influenced by email marketing. Yes, email marketing. The reason for that is because of the relationship inherent in email marketing. United States, there is a federal law that says you cannot just email anybody. You can't solicit for business uh, um, to just randomly anybody. You must have permission to email them. So people give you their contact information. You are allowed to use that in marketing. But you can't just go beat somebody over the head, steal their business card, and email them, right? 
So there's an inherent benefit to the fact that people willingly gave you their contact information. That is a great way to establish a relationship with people, stay top of mind, get people to take action. And email marketing is the king here because of the nature of that relationship. People follow social media almost casually, right? Oh, that was a fun video. Let me let me follow. That was an interesting article. Let me follow that. They're not necessarily as engaged as email marketers and text marketing is also really valuable. We love text marketing and constant contact, and a part of today's presentation will be on that. But email is still king, but you must be aware of where people are consuming content. If we were in person, I'd ask you this, and I'd see a show of hands. How many of you have checked your email today? Most of you would be raising your hands, right? How many of you checked your email on, on your smartphone? So you'd be raising your hand. You're not alone. 91% of consumers, uh, customers, People check their email daily. 88% regularly check their email on their smartphone. If you think about it, the most used app probably on your phone is your email app. I know many of you probably think of TikTok or Facebook, Instagram. It's probably email. You're probably in and out of your email inbox constantly on your smartphone. Who else is? Your clients, your prospects. Business is happening in your inbox. But there is a danger with these magical devices. Attention spans have gotten really short. The average time somebody reads an email is nine seconds. People don't read email. They scan them. They skin them. This is all the more reason to provide relevant content. What does relevancy mean? Again, are they interested in this part of town? Do they have price sensitivity here? Do they have a family? Do they not? Are they interested in a condo? Are they interested in commercial? The more you can target your audience with relevant content, the more successful you'll be. But... Let's take a step back because all of this is about artificial intelligence and magic. Before we get a little bit deeper into artificial intelligence and email, can we trust can we trust AI, Stephanie? Yeah, well, you know, here's the thing is that uh, with with artificial intelligence, just with with anything new, right? We're a little bit hesitant as to really, really diving in. Number one, it sounds pretty complex. Right. Real estate agents, uh, especially are, are bombarded. The average real estate professional is juggling between four and seven different tech platforms. So we fear the complexity, the lack of familiarity of not used this before. And is it expensive? Right. We're already paying for so much. We've got our dues. We've got this. We've got that. Is this something that really is going to fit in my budget? Is is what it can do for me worth the investment? And then, of course, especially in real estate. We really fear uh, errors or a misinterpretation of the, of the messages we're trying to put across, especially when it comes to fair housing laws. Yes, I want to use AI tools to create my listing descriptions, but is it going to work hand in hand with those uh, fair housing laws? Um, and how can we really make sure that it's going to work for us? Now, of course, we're going to talk about how important it is to make sure that human interaction is always part of what we're creating with AI, right? The goal is to work smarter, not harder. Um, but the reality comes down to this. Real estate professionals, like I mentioned before, we lack the time, the interest, and the expertise to market effectively. We know this. So you don't have time to not use AI, right? It is going, AI is going to allow you to automate your content. It is, I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't have even the capacity to remember all my friends and family's birthdays, <laughs> let alone uh, home buying anniversaries, which by the way, is an incredible opportunity to get uh, seller leads. Um, we want to make sure that we have drip campaigns, uh, social campaigns, property descriptions, you know, adhering to fair housing laws that can be got all of that great stuff. Edit and optimize. It is crucial that in real estate that we have a professional brand, that we make sure that we are free of errors, that we are maximizing deliverability. Because again, when email is your greatest source of connecting with your base, where there are no algorithms involved, we need to make sure that deliverability is number one. So we're actually reaching the inbox. Constant contact can take care of that, but AI helps. And of course, personalized recommendations and templates. Because we are a scanning generation, we also scan through our email uh, and we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to stand out in the sea of emails um, and AI can help you with all of that. And then also we just did a, a webinar today uh, to our Miami market 
it is absolutely crucial with my with my market in Miami that we are are able to create content in other languages. Um, you know, uh, the uh, Spanish speaking community, the Portuguese speaking community um, in Southern Florida, it is crucial and AI will allow you to reach that that audience as well. So let's talk about some content ideas, right? Let's talk about the things that we should be doing. And then I want you to bust out your magic wand and, and show everyone how Constant Contact can do it for you. All right. So first, let me just uh, relieve some pressure here. So before I even get into some best practices, Constant Contact makes it easy for you to produce marketing even without AI. So we have templates ready for real estate. You drop in your logo, you drop in your colors, you drop in your property or other information and off you run. Now, Constant Contact has something called a brand kit where you put your logo in once, you put your color schemes in once, and every single time you produce an email, your logo and color schemes are already there. Your website, your social media links are already there. All you need to do is put in that fresh information. But even though Constant Contact has made it easy, no, nah, it's too early for that, Stephanie, because I'm about I got to, excited. I'm about to, I mean, about to, you know, it deserved a firework. I'm about to bring the pain. Even I though Constant know. Contact makes it easy, there's some strategy you need to employ, folks. You need to keep emails simple as possible. Be mindful of attention span. After reviewing 2.1 million emails in Constant Contact's vast database of emails that are sent out, we've found the, the, the following information. The emails that are most successful, that get the most results. Results are going to be the number of people that open the email, the number of people that read the email, the number of people that click on links in the email. Follow the same pattern. 25 lines of text uh, or less is best. Now, can you have a little bit more? 35 lines, 45 lines? Sure. Just sharing with you what produces the best results. In my time at Constant Contact, I've taught many agents and brokers, associations. And one thing that challenges this industry is keeping the email as concise as possible. This reflects back to what I said earlier, segmentation. Don't send one email to everyone because it's probably not going to be relevant to everyone think through your market think through your specialty think through what you're trying to accomplish the most simple segmentation which is basically taking a large group of people and breaking it up into smaller groups of people is client v prospect mm -hmm. right that's one all of you can understand you wouldn't talk in the same way to a client that you would to a prospect you wouldn't be showing them the same information that's right but to my point earlier Heart of town, product affinity, uh, uh, family, non-family, price point, right? There's a lot of things that might be relevant to some, but not relevant to others. So instead of having one email that goes 75, 150 lines of text, maybe that's screaming at you. You're making an email that's too complex for nine seconds. Use buttons in your email. So many agents and brokers will use blue hyperlinks if they're doing email marketing. I want you to stop doing that. You want to use buttons as a link, and Constant Contact makes it easy for you to do that. The reason you want to use buttons for a link is because hyperlinks require many people to have to pinch their screen. People are lazy. They're not going to go through that much trouble, right? Mm. Buttons are big. Fat fingers like mine can hit those buttons and go see your property, go see your blog, go see your information, register for a class, whatever you're asking them to do. We want to make it easy. Nine seconds is the amount of time they'll spend in the email on average, but when they click, now that's where the first level of magic happens because now they're going to spend more time. Why? Because they made that commitment to learn more about that property, to learn more about you, to mo learn more about that class, to learn more about whatever it is you have in that email. You want to keep your images to three images or less, not including your logo. This is probably the biggest challenge for the real estate industry. Look, I know you may have 15 properties ready to show in that email. Can you do that? Sure. The best thing to do, though, is, again, target. Is all of those Are all of those properties really meant for your entire database? Maybe, maybe not. Also, make sure that if you're inclined to show five great pictures of the property, the front yard, the backyard, the pool, all the cool things, maybe choose the one or two that are really going to help make your case and let people see more on the listing page, right? If you have 10 Curb appeal tips, give people three and have them click to learn more. Never make your email 100% image. I see this all the time. You do a print ad in the local newspaper. You do a, some sort of ad online. You just take that creative, right? And you just make it your email. You just upload it as an image. And inside that image is the property, is the price point, is the square footage, is the location. Well, spam filters don't know what's in that picture. 
And spam filter is going to go, hey, this email is 100% image, and I don't even know what it is. I'm going to throw it in the garbage. Well, now your email is not even getting seen. It's not even being delivered. So spam filters require you have at least 25% of your email actually text. So it has some idea what your email is about. When you include images in your email, I don't mean to make images sound bad. They are great. When you have a nine-second window in front of your audience, an image speaks a thousand words, and that's very, very powerful. But make sure you're linking your images. You have the ability, at least through constant contact, I can't speak to our competitors, to link your images. The reason you want to link your images is that most people will actually try to click an image rather than text. In fact, you'll see a 650% increase in your clicks if you link your images. Another benefit to linking images is, again, I've got fat fingers. Make it easy for me to do things, and I'm more likely to do the things you want. When you're writing your email, there's a very basic structure that you want to have. One is, what are you offering? That's the hook, right? So that's going to be your properties. That's going to be your education. That's going to be your event announcement. That's the hook. That's what you're offering. What I challenge you to do is make sure that you identify as quickly as you can and explain as quickly as you can in your email, what is this email is all about? What is my offer? How will it help them? Right. So that's going to be a little bit of the body. What is important about what you're sharing? So that might be the property description. That might be a description of why they should attend the event. You need to relay very, very quickly what's in it for your subscribers. Lastly, what should they do? Do they want to click? Uh, or should they um, should they click? Should they watch a video? What is it we want them to do? Ultimately, we're trying to get people to click on a link. Why? Because that's where truly the money is. Constant contact will tell you who clicks on what. You can know that if I, I'll use Stephanie as an example. I send an email to Stephanie and I have three properties in that email. Stephanie clicks on one of the properties. Let's say she clicks on number two of the three. What do I know about Stephanie? I know a lot more than I did. I know that she's maybe in market. She's interested in a property of that size in this location at that price point. I immediately know something about her. Educational content, Stephanie clicks on that educational content. I know what content appeals to Stephanie. This is the first step into targeting your audience because you take that information and you collate it. Can't Everybody do that on social media, Matt. You cannot. Everybody who clicks on that second property, you know they're probably interested in that kind of property. Collate them, collect them, and send an email about similar property. Also tells you about your content. Like, is it hitting the mark? You send out an email and nobody's clicking links. Maybe you're sending the wrong email to the wrong audience. Maybe you need to rethink your strategy. Ultimately, you want to be segmenting and targeting your audience because you see an increase in money. Yes, I'll say it. 52% will just abandon your email. If it's not relevant, if it's not meant for them, they start to ignore it. That's the danger zone. But on the positive, you'll see an 11% higher open rate, more people opening your email, and most importantly, where the money is, a 27% increase in people clicking your links in your email because your content was relevant.